Hey, welcome back to my favorite fireball throwing spellcasters. Now I'm pretty excited about today's video because we're gonna talk about <laughs> all things night vision. Now a ton of you guys messaged me and let me know you guys picked up your first or your next night vision housing. Some of you guys got Manicore R's, some of you guys got PVS 14s, and I wanna welcome you into that night vision fold where you can join me out at night and actually see what you're doing. Now in a ton of those emails also, there was a lot of questions about different night vision accessories like irises, battery packs, and different night vision storage. So today I wanna to help everyone out by going over some night vision accessories, cleaning, and some of the best ways I've found to transport my nods. If you're anything like me, you saved up for your nods forever, then you finally get them and you're like, wait a minute, am I supposed to clean these things? Do I really even need a battery pack? Can I store this on my gear somehow? How do you do this? I hope you answer all those questions and explain what the hell these irises are and why you want to set. But before we get into that, let's take a moment and thank today's sponsor. Today's video is sponsored in part by Javelin Concepts. In a world of bulk and excess, Javelin spins gear design on its head to offer a slimline product focused with the Ajax plate carrier and a 556 placard that makes you completely silent for those covert roles. Javelin Concepts has just taken gear design up a level. Their carriers are just ridiculous and I challenge you to take Javelin up on their comfort guarantee. But make sure to use discount code TLDCO. Save yourself a little bit of money over at the Javelin Concepts website. Javelin always gives TLD a lot of love, so big thanks to them for supporting us and what we do here. Now, for the next part is my biases. And I think I'm gonna just skip this because I have no idea where most of this stuff came from. Just assume that I, like everyone else, am biased in some way. And as I always tell you, make sure to do your own research so you can be the most educated consumer possible. But trying to remember and talk for 10 minutes about where all these things came from sounds like the most boring video ever. So let's get started though and talk about one of the more misunderstood bits with one of these night vision irises. Now I recently upgraded to these and this is the Nod Pod Iris. The Nod Pod is 3D printed and has this cool hexagon cap along the front to act as a kill flash, but you can use a more familiar design with the inexpensive Amazon version with a standard 37 millimeter aperture and sacrificial front lens. Now I'm showing you irises, but you can also use Butler Creek scope caps, you know, like the, the flip up caps. You can just put a pinhole in the front of it and it's going to achieve the same thing that these irises are gonna do when you flip that scope cap up and down. I used those scope caps myself for a long time. I just didn't really love it because there'd always be some cap that would be flopping around that I'd eventually break off. I just found the irises were a lot better because I had a lot more adjustments in terms of focal length and field of view. I know that's a little bit tricky and I think it'll help if I explain what these things actually do. So what the heck I'm talking about. The irises use a basic camera aperture to widen and narrow the amount of light coming through the opening. As the iris narrows, it cuts the amount of light, but also changes the focal length to give your eye a larger depth of field, allowing you to focus on objects at both close and far distances. Having a normal field of view, you can you kind of have this very finite focus on what exactly you're looking at, and maybe you could focus on you know, 15, 20 feet if you really start to collapse it down. But when you change that focal length, you start to be able to see a lot more that you can focus in on all at once. So instead of just being able to see, oh, I can see 10 feet and beyond, I can see five feet to 30 feet, you can see three feet to 100 feet. So it, the changing that focal length changes how many things, kind of like the name says, how many things are in focus and widens that range. Now though, this aperture technology is nothing new. And the fact that somebody patented putting a regular old schmegular camera aperture on a night vision device is, is kind of ridiculous. It would be the same as me like gluing a fork to the side of this and then trying to call it something special. That's not being an inventor. That's not thinking up new ideas. That's just being an asshole. Now, being able to change that focal length with the iris is extremely useful when moving from a longer focus range like outside and transitioning to inside where you need to see closer objects. You can just close the iris and you gain a much larger field of view. You do lose light transmission, so there is a trade-off, but it can be balanced because now you can use your same high power illuminator setting you had outside indoors because you're cutting the light coming into the unit. 
So instead of transitioning in and having to adjust the focus on both and then adjusting the illuminator settings on everything else, you can just collapse your irises and then use all your normal settings and just go from there. Now, hold on. You do have to be careful with that though, because when we did our night vision tools video, I was with Jason and I was using that kind of configuration with my irises and Jason was using a setup that he did not have irises. And every time I came in and everything I was using, it just completely blinded him. So be aware that your team configuration and who you're working with and what you're doing could come into play if you are gonna use irises and, and what you're gonna do as you move from outdoors to indoors. Now, you could just adjust the focus on the two different eyepieces instead of using an iris, but the iris does three things all at once. One, acting as a day cap to protect the unit. Two, keeping me from having to adjust two different focuses because one of my eyes is junk and three, protecting the unit if I was to blast super bright IR inside an enclosed space. And there is kind of a pseudo number four argument that you can use irises in the place of manual gain in some night vision units that don't have that. Now, I don't recommend that if you're building your night vision setup from the ground up, because not only is it, you know, is the gain going down, but you're also cutting a lot of the light that's actually coming into the night vision unit. It's just not necessarily what you want, but in a pinch, it does work to make the light coming into the nods dimmer so that you still have your peripheral view and you don't just destroy all your situational awareness. Now, I mainly upgraded to the new nod pod style as it's lighter weight than the Amazon version, but I've also used the Amazon ones for years. Now, kind of as I alluded to, these irises can be great, but just make sure your entire team is using them. Otherwise, when you go to use yours, you may be at a different light level than they are, and you could just be completely blinding everybody else in the room. Now, these irises are great, but they can be kind of expensive. And I wanna give you one more inexpensive option, and that's just with a basic night vision bikini cover. The one I have here is the Nocturne version. I like this because it gives you options based on what you're doing. You can also see there's a pinhole at the front to function as a day cap to keep your nods from getting damaged. And yes, that can happen if you have these caps off or none of these irises and you have these units exposed and pointing to the sun. Don't do that. Dirty Civilian already tested it and the damage to the unit was substantial. And that was even, you know, most people think that's gonna be with the actual unit turned on. No, they did it with the unit off and it was still able to burn through and do a ton of damage to their night vision. So yeah, day caps are a must, either irises or bikini covers. On the Nocturne bikini cover, they also included spaces for bands to hold it in place. So you could flip your bikini covers up or down and the covers themselves stay retained on the unit instead of having to throw them in a pocket. Now with these guys though, I don't recommend getting them in a configuration where they flip down. And the main reason I say that is because when I set up my night vision, I like to set them up a little bit higher on my head. So I actually have to kind of look down to see through them, but then I can look up when I want to transition to white light. Now, if you have your bikini covers flipped down, it starts to obscure a lot of your view when you're also trying to look underneath and look through an optic. Now, I also found flipping them up can cause issues with stowage as the cap can run into your night vision housing. So I just put mine off to the side so they're clear of the unit and nicely stowed out of the way. So based on your night vision housing and what you're doing, you may need to play a little bit with placement, but bikini covers are a really great, lightweight, inexpensive option to protect your night vision. One other thing to note too, as the cover is rubber, there's also a small amount of protection added to the lenses if they were to be dropped. Me personally, I prefer the irises due to the flexibility and what they let me do but the bikini covers are really a no brainer for like an emergency situation because they're just so cheap and light. You'd be surprised how many people I run across when doing training or on the range that are playing with their night vision and I have to let them borrow some bikini covers because they're using them in the daytime. So these are very useful to have around. Now though, next let's talk about battery packs and why you would use this. Here I have a Nocturne bat pack. This uses a waterproof submersion rated compartment to house four CR123 batteries for a total runtime of 96 hours. Think of these though as battery bank one and battery bank two. The rear of the housing is also rounded to form a better fit to helmet profiles and it uses a knob on the side to supply power. The knob controls are in this position, battery bank one, then you turn it to off, then you turn it to battery bank two. 
I just want you to understand that the four batteries aren't connected together. It's the two battery banks. So if you are on setting one and then your battery bank one died, you would need to flip it back over to battery bank two in order to get your night vision working again. I don't know why it seems confusing to people, but I wanted to definitely explain it. Uh, I will say also, I did a ton of review videos, a ton of training, and I've just been out testing a ton of stuff that I haven't even gotten to show you guys yet. And I'm still using battery bank number one. So yes, it lasts a really long time. The backpack also uses a standard Fisher port. So you can get any cord from Nocturne to go from Fisher to Fisher, or like I have with the Fisher to Micro Limo on the Manicore R. Rear battery packs like this one are nice because they remove entire Mohawk setups and pouch bulk by having just a single compartment to house all your power. I will say on the backpack, and I told Nocturne this too, so maybe we see some improvements later, that I wish there was a way to add some additional weight to this because I found based off whatever night vision unit I was using, like sometimes I can use 14s, but then sometimes I use full on like Manicore R housings. And as what I'm using changes, the counterbalance weight that I'm using also changes, but there's no way to do that with this unit. So it would be neat to see a sleeker Mohawk style system that fits just the backpack and allows me to add in some weights or other small markers if I needed that. Overall though, I really do like the battery packs because they kind of pull double duty of giving you that battery storage and the counterweight. So you get a ton more runtime and you don't have to play, you know, the battery exchange game out in the dark anymore. So yeah, battery packs are awesome. I just do wish there was a way to add in some additional counterweights. Now though, another thing people ask a lot about is cleaning, like how to clean night vision. And more often than not, most time the question is, how often do you clean night vision? And I'll preface with this. Night vision housings like the Manicore R and PVS 14s are actually designed for rough use by the military and require low to no maintenance. I think a good way to explain it is like sunglasses. If your sunglasses are dirty and gross, you should clean them so you can see out of them. But otherwise you wouldn't like randomly clean your sunglasses every three months. You know, that would be weird. And it's pretty much the same for night vision. You just clean it if it's dirty. If you find your nods are dusty, just spray them off with some compressed air. And if they're insanely caked with mud and crud, dunk them in some water and clean them off with a rag. So the housings themselves are pretty easy to clean off, but the lenses themselves can be a little bit more intricate. And you may have seen people use these before, and this is one of the lens pens. A lot of scopes come with these, so you may have a few of these sitting around. I know I got quite a few of them, but you clean the lenses on your scopes the same way you're gonna clean the lenses on your night vision. On the end of the lens pen is a standard brush. Here you can use this to clean out dust and debris from the edges. I would do this first so you can get most of the loose dirt and items that may scratch your lenses. On the other side of the lens pen is the carbon cleaning side that you can use to clean and pick up dirt and dust off the lens. This side actually uses graphite to grab and lift the dust off the lens. Some folks get super intricate in their cleaning and they say to like spray it with glass cleaner first and then use a brush and then do this. So you can be as OCD as you wanna be, but for me, I just, I don't know, I just clean it with the brush. <laughs> it's perfect. As a new owner, I just want you to know that these units were designed to be used by people who could barely pass their ASVAB. So your cleaning interval, there really isn't one. You just clean it whenever it's dirty or if it's just caked in crud. So cleaning, simple, clean, clean if it's gross. Now I wanna show you some storage options, but first I wanna show you some of these lenses as these are very interesting. So let's talk about what these guys can do. The first type is the clear style lens protector. These connect into the front of your optics to give you a sacrificial lens to protect your illuminator from anything hitting the front of the tube. These are really popular in like airsoft where those little tiny BBs could in theory go into the front of this housing and actually damage your illuminator. Now I've always wanted to do some airsofting with the Nocturne guys, so I definitely throw these on when we go to do that. But you may also wanna have some sacrificial lenses depending on some sort of training or something else you're doing just to add some extra level of protection to your nods. As we noted with the iris, a lot of these also include the same sacrificial lens style. Cold Harbor Media also makes the Chad, which has even more durability to take some serious beatings, along with an anti-reflective version. 
Cold Harbor Media is also up in Canada and America's hat. So be aware that the shipping can be a little bit of a gut punch. Now, one thing I think I do need to note is when using the irises and the sacrificial lenses, everything I've talked about so far is designed for standard PVS-14 optics. I just want you to be aware that AGM and even EOTech can have some different style optics that have different thread pitches, and many of the irises and sacrificial lenses won't work on those. So if you don't know if you have mil-spec optics, ask a friend or an internet stranger like myself so we can help determine what size thread pitch you have if you wanna grab some irises or some different lenses. I just don't want you to buy all this and get all these things and then get the wrong size parts. Now, another type of lens that's really interesting are these onyx filters. These connect into the rear of the unit and are more a brown tint for white fuzz and more violet for green tubes. The filters take the image and convert it to more of a black and white instead of a green or bluish image. One interesting misnomer that most people don't realize is that white phosphor or green, the tube color, it actually costs the same to produce them, but there's more demand for the white than the green, so you can usually save a ton of money getting the green color. And an option you could do then is to get the onyx filters so you could save some money on the green tubes and then get a color tone that you like better than the green. But the real purpose of these onyx filters is actually to shift the color of your night vision to match a thermal white hot or black hot colorway by having your nods now match the same white black color pattern. And it's supposed to help your brain make sense of what you're looking at so that you have both images in at least the same color palette instead of having one in black and white and one in green and blue. Personally, I like the white phosphor color tones. I like the way it looks. I think it's cool and natural just to use for a long period of time in night vision. But I would use some of these Onyx filters. I wanna try out that thermal setup. Like if I was gonna run them both, I would wanna have the same color tone. And if I was running a green set of nods, I would also add those Onyx filters just so I could have a, a better contrasting color than green and black. All right, though, now, once you start using all this and using all your filters and doing all your cool stuff and protecting all your things, you're gonna realize you have to have a place to stow your night vision to keep it safe when everything is getting banged around. Hard cases like this condition one that I have, th these are cool, but this is more for travel as I can't put this in a pocket or on my gear anywhere. One bag I really like for training is the Audi Gear V2 helmet bag with the nods box. This gives you a place to store your helmet along with a ton of storage along the side for all the various items I talked to you about like cleaning items, lenses, and bikini covers or whatever. The rear nods box also allows you to disconnect your nods and store them in this removable padded pouch also. I left everything outside, I'm not going to get it. Now, when I set up my helmet and everything in the bag, I usually just disconnect the entire Wilcox mount because when you go to close it, it'll be sticking up. And then I put the night vision and the whole Wilcox mount in that rear nods pouch. The version two of the Audi helmet bag also increased the size of the bag overall. Now I have a huge noggin and have large or extra large helmets. So I like this a lot as the whole setup just fits a whole ton better. Another great pouch option that you can get from TNVC is the padded NVG expandable pouch. This guy does everything in a small package and can be a one-stop shop to hold your night vision, your accessories, and any paperwork. The NVG pouch also stows nicely inside a helmet to give you a really simple way to transport both your nods and your helmet. As a side note, yes, you can also use that whole setup with the Audi Gear helmet bag and use the rear nods pouch for more oddball items. And that setup's mostly what I've done because I usually have to have some weirder type of things like first person recorders in that rear pouch. Oh yeah, I probably should talk about first person recorders also, but I got one more bag to talk to you about. Now, those bags are awesome when you wanna transport and go somewhere and go to like training and then deploy them. But what about if you wanna stow actual night vision on your kit? For this, I use the Defense Mechanism's padded insert and multifunction pouch. The pouch can just be attached to my carrier or belt and then have the padded insert to protect my nods on that side pouch. I also flip the padded pouch to a standard GP when not in use on my kit for another storage option if you wanna like store everything in a large Pelican. 
So take a look at defense mechanisms if you want some gear storage or Pelican storage option, but the Audi gear is nice too. And both the DM and the Audi gear, I can save you a little bit of money and you can use discount code TLDCO on both of those guys. Okay, one last one because people always ask about these. And these are your night vision first person recorders. This particular device is the NVGR Pro from Brown Bear. I use this along with the version one to capture the first person footage like night vision driving and training and all the other footage we share with you. The recorder connects into, again, standard PVS-14 style optics and has the camera just at the bottom of your field of view. It probably looks larger when you're seeing it at home, but your brain does some tricks where you can actually see around it and you really don't notice the camera. And these first person recorders can be really cool if you wanna capture a training event or other cool stuff you're doing out at night and you wanna share it with some friends later. One thing I like about the NVGR Pro is it also records in 1080, 2K and 4K, plus it has an internal battery that lasts two to three hours. Now, as it has that two to three hour battery, it can be a little bit limiting. So I'll say one trick that I learned is I just use a battery bank and I connect it into my gear and connect it into here. And then I just hit record and just with that setup, you can go all night and record as long as you want to. Just, and just ignore the internal battery completely. Now I do wanna say also, there are some optics that these devices work better with. Uh, the best one are the standard mil-spec Carson glass. And then the next one, it, it's not quite as good as what I have here. This is the RPO 3.0. These work but the standard mil-spec Carson glass, that is the best to use with these first person recorders. Now, I really don't recommend them with boom slangs because the camera is not exactly on center and you're gonna get this weird distorted view. I just want you to be aware of that because some of these optics can be very expensive and then some of these recorders can be really expensive and you could get a combination of parts that just don't work together at all and I don't want that to happen to you. So yeah, first person recorders, Millspec Carson glass. Now though, I think that's everything and all the accessories I wanted to bring you guys to talk about. I'm sure there's more. So sound off in the comments if you have some questions. I'll do my best to research it and answer it all for you and get you a good knowledgeable answer. I will say though, as some of the accessories I like the most, I would definitely recommend you pick up some of these irises and that Audi gear helmet bag because it's just absolutely crazy. But I hope this video on night vision, accessories, cleaning and storage along with all the other doodads was helpful in your purchasing decisions. I wanna say thanks to all the Patreon supporters and the YouTube members. You make it possible we can get all this stuff together, test it all out, and find out what's actually worth your money. And I wanna say thanks to everyone that likes, comments, and subscribes. Comment down below as to what you think is the most essential night vision accessory so the other viewers can read it and so I can go buy it too. All right, everyone, wash out. I think night vision accessories are interesting because you can buy all sorts of things that you think you need, but it's hard to know what exactly you need. Like, do you, do you need battery packs? No, but are, do I think they're better overall? Yeah, I think they are. So just be careful not wasting money on night vision things because I don't know why, but everything night vision and everything on your head uh, costs like a billion dollars. I don't, I don't know what's going on with that. Uh, next video. Oh, I got something cool. We're gonna be going over, I teased it a little bit before. We're gonna be going over all the budget headsets. So instead of doing all the expensive ones, I have all the cheap ones. Uh, they're pretty bad. I've been playing with a few of them. I've not, not been super impressed so far. So it's gonna be a fun video. Uh, another one we're gonna be doing, I think we're gonna be doing a ranking on some different slings. You guys asked about that. And I started thinking about it. One thing we never really did is ranking medical, like we've talked about a lot of different medical pouches and stuff. So I think I'm gonna do something along the same lines and start looking at some medical stuff because there's some some cool ones I've seen recently, but then start to actually give them a ranking, like, you know, so you, you can kind of see what's good, what kits are the best ones to go after and what may be so-so. So I'll work on that. Otherwise though, you guys gotta go. I'm gonna go play with all these doodads because it's now it's nighttime outside and all right. I'm just rambling here at the end. Go, go. No, the cat's not coming down. The cat, I locked him out. He can't, he can't come in here I, because he tried to jump in here like three times. I had to go lock him out. All right, you guys gotta go. You guys see, did you see too where I forgot to turn the light on like halfway through? This is the cool guy, like cool guy lights. Yeah, I didn't have it on. No, oh, okay, go, God, good, good grief, go away.